that's not my way. My way is to make my own rules. My way is to live life the way that I want. And with all of you by my side, and what I realized is my friends, my best friends, my lovers by my side, we can truly do anything. But alas, we just had an hour-long main event. I'm tired, I've almost died. This is where I must beat you. I do. Everybody, Osaka Joe Hall, everyone in New Japan world, thank you so very much. Goodbye, Mwah! and good night. What's going on, everybody? This is Justin uh, and Meals, and welcome to the A Show, episode thirty-four. What's going on, Meals? How you doing? Um, I'm okay. Um, yeah, that's just me. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you know me, you know me. That's like one of my like responses. Like, eh, I'm okay. Yeah, like life is fine. Like very cromulent. I'm currently savaging some. Uh, some chips ahoy cookies for breakfast. This is this is the way I live. You know, Robbie told me you had a bad diet and you ate like a kid and then you denied it, but then you're eating chips ahoy for breakfast. So I don't know who to believe anymore. I had a weak moment. Don't, don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, you know, we you know, our time difference makes it so that we do this. It's ten o'clock here, it's one o'clock over there. You yes. know, you you probably already eaten breakfast and lunch. I've not and eaten lunch. I've been up probably uh, uh, Fun fact to those who listen to this podcast and the dedication we have, usually I'm recording this on my lunch. So I do not usually eat lunch. And then right after I return this, I'm actually recording this on my lunch at work. And after this, I have to run right back to a meeting. So, you know, lunch is questionable for the day. Dinner, probably plentiful. I will probably <laughs> eat until my gourd, you know, until I explode. It will probably be a very beautiful dinner that I'll have if I don't have lunch today. That's all I got to say, because I got to make up for all the macros and shit that I don't eat. You got to keep the, those 16-inch pythons. They're uh, not fully. anymore, man. You Believe it or not, I haven't actually worked out the big workout talk we have right now. I have not <laughs> worked out. Um, I have not lifted heavy in like a couple of weeks because I'm really just trying to like lose body fat. So, I mean, you can do that by lifting heavy, but it's just like, wait, I'd rather just do high volume and other stuff because it's lighter and, and I don't have really a lot of time to be like deadlifting 365 pounds anymore. Wow. So you could be a WWE wrestler. No, they can deadlift more. Like, have you seen, um, what's the, what's my home girl, the EST of NXT? Uh, oh, uh, Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair, a, a specimen. My God. Like Mandy Rose, a specimen. Those ladies really like kick ass in the gym. I'm I'm in, in I'm in debt to them. Like, you know? They they benching your ass? That's crazy. They're one hundred percent benching me. I believe they can. They can <laughs> squat me, all the other shit, you know. Uh <laughs> I was gonna make a joke and then I said no. Um <laughs> it's probably gonna be problematic. That's it was, was, it was, but you know, it is what it is. Um, how has your week been going, sir? How is how is E three out there? Uh, E3 is nuts. Uh, you know, since they've opened it to the public, it has been uh, just pandemonium on on all ends. I'd say this this year's E3 has been a has been a success just for games that I actually want, like have been wanting for years, like the Resident Evil 2 remake, which is incredible, mm -hmm. and I cannot wait for it to come out uh, in January. Um, and Devil May Cry Five. I think those are like the, just the two games that I want. Like I have, I have a very simple taste. Like I remember I was lobbying for Street Fighter to come back, 
It came back. I was like, okay, cool. I don't need to, I don't need to buy anything else. So since those two games got announced, I'm straight. Like everything else is like, whatever. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're excited for like the Pokemon on switch and, and smash and stuff like that. Um, you know what? I'm becoming less excited as the weeks go by and actually seeing what this Pokemon let's go Pikachu. Let's go Ash. Let's yes. go. I'm becoming less excited as the weeks go on, but you know what? I'm still intrigued. I, 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 I said on Twitter, likely, I'm going to, I may not buy first. You know what? Uh, don't hold me to this. I feel like the price is going to go down for the game. Uh, the Nintendo game? No. For the Pokemon game? No, it's not. You Nintendo sure? games, never, they never have price. No, they never have. They never go on sale. Uh, Mario Kart is still 60 bucks. I, I bought Zelda a month ago. It was 60 bucks still. Wow. They never go. They literally never go on sale. Like the game is going to be the price that it is when it comes out to a point when, you know, you get it. So I just bite the bullet and get it. I'm not excited for that switch game at all. Yeah. It's a, I mean, you know what? I, this is going too in depth in this. Um, <laughs> cause I can go in depth. You know what I'm saying? I, I just feel like it's, it's like, it's a game that, I mean, if you want to talk about Nintendo's E3 as a whole, yes, um, let's talk about it. I mean, uh, yeah, I feel as though it, I feel as though all the conferences this year at E3 were solid. I don't feel like one was over the other. I feel like Sony, they, they kind of, they honed in on the four games that they have coming out that are big first party games that, you know, the first party obviously means that they made it in house um, or had a studio in house making for them. Mm-hmm. They honed in on those four. There's Spider-Man, uh, the, the game Ghost, it's a samurai game. Death Stranding, which we don't know. Uh, no one knows what it's about. And uh, that's a Spider-Man already. Yeah. Uh, and and um, what was the fourth game? Oh, Last of Us, uh, chapter two, part two. Those are the four games. Those are the big games that are going to carry them into 2020 at least. And I'm fine with that. Microsoft, they had a, they have a lot of ground to cover. So they had to really, you know, prove that they could do it. But a lot of the games they showed, you could play on PS4. And Nintendo, you know, they're able to be in their own lane. So this year, they, they the whole conference was Smash Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> they, had, they had nothing else this year. I, I, that was the only conference I managed to tune in, even though I kind of I tuned into... Which one was the one on Monday night? I think it was Sony. It was Sony. It was Sony. Yeah. So when Raw was boring, which a lot of it was, um, I tuned oh, we're not, in. We're not going to be talking about Raw much on the show, by the yeah, way. Yeah, so. I tuned. I tuned into that one because I was just like, okay, this is what everyone's talking about, and I'm a sheep. Um, I, I have no next gen system, but I'm like, yo, let's let, let's see what everyone's talking about. And you know what? I was impressed. I was impressed. With there's the some there's there's some great stuff coming. Like with Sony, Sony's I was more um more inclined and more more confident in my purchase and and sticking with sony with the playstation 4 with xbox i wasn't sold because it was like it was a bunch of third-party games that are going to come to another system i think people were excited because they just showed off games and i was like that's great i was excited for the games they showed but i wasn't excited to play them on that system i was excited because i knew that they were coming to my system too and with nintendo it was like I'm not interested in the Pokemon game at all because once I found out that it was a it was another remake, and I, I, I've told you this personally, Mills. I was like, I was completely out, and I don't like Pokemon Go's capture system. Well, all right. So to me, the capture system in Pokemon Go is to me, I, I like it way more than the system they have in the current Pokemon games, and it may just be because I love the AR aspect of Go um because it's really and and just like you can do you really control like how you throw it because in the game you just kind of throw it in hopes like you know hope to god you you catch it and it's kind of classic yeah but at the same time it's also like very like mundane after a while like consider i you know i play pokemon go i play the record of pokemon i was not a fan anymore of catching them in the regular game because i was just like go is so much more fun and um, the only issue, I mean, I have multiple issues with the, re- I like the fact it was a remake. I asked for a Pokemon Yellow remake. I was just like, I want that, if you do but it. In this, but, but why this can't is like Nintendo, a, why this, can't Nintendo leave Kanto alone? That's my problem. Because Kanto is classic. Kanto is the reason why Pokemon Go is as, as popular as it was. Kanto is the reason why damn near the 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 following game, Gold and Silver, was it, it when when they included it in that game as well like it's it's what everyone sort of knows so i get it my only issue with this is that they've sort of 
in the years, they babied this game down to a level where it's just like, it's no longer, I mean, it was never for adults, but you, you as an adult, you can enjoy it. And this is kind of really for a kid. Like they kind of, the fact that they changed the rival in the game to be more like friendly to you, as opposed to like being a dick, like Gary usually was or blue or whoever that you played against. Like, it's just like, oh, we really doing this. And then like in the first game, there's so much hand holding and all this other stuff. Like, you know, I could, I could go on a rant for days about this. Like yeah. it's, it's a, but I mean, they, they spent a, a paltry, like five minutes on that game at their, at their conference. Uh, Mario Kart it's a remake. I think if, once they get to the actual 2019 game, it'll probably. Yeah, but it's like I would rather them just, you know, tap out on it this year and just put them out the same year. You know what I'm saying? Like, put put like it's a remake. We've played it already. You know, like just put that out in March and then put the the 2019 game out in the fall. I'm good with the remake, man. I'll be honest with you. I'm I'm not getting that shit. But uh <laughs> like Mario I Party watch people played on YouTube. <laughs> never never been a fan of Mario Party, uh personally. Yeah, personally. nah. N- yeah, nah. Neither nah, of them. Not my thing. But Super Smash Brothers, they spent at least forty five minutes. I shit you not. They comp- they it's okay, so the game has over seventy characters from every single Smash Brothers game ever ever it's made. Like everyone's there. Which is like, it's a good kind of clusterfuck. I don't know how it's going to work balance-wise, because I know, you know, that's a competitive game. People play Smash, whatever, whatever. I don't know how that's going to work balance-wise, but, like, as far as just introducing these characters, they spent 45 minutes telling you the most minute details about every single one of these characters. To a point where I was like, do you have anything else to talk about in this game? Because you could literally just put this in a blog post and not in your, in your big E3 direct. But I, I'm excited for Smash. But I think that this, the Switch, to me... There's not many games on there I want to play, you, even the stuff were, that they showed. You, you weren't excited about the the unlockables, the way you have to unlock shit. I don't like that. I don't like that. I feel like unlocking characters in 2018 is is archaic. Like, give me a code. I'll I'll pay to unlock all these characters without having to play through it a million times. I'm I I'm not 12 years old anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm 31 years old. I don't have time to like unlock characters. I think that's just but what ridiculous. about 12 year olds, bro? But, well, I mean, that's why I say give me a code, make it a DLC. I'll, I'll pay to unlock them. I'll pay like two, three dollars to unlock them. That's fine. Like with Street Fighter Five, mm-hmm. they have characters that are, you know, they're DLC characters. I just buy the season pass as soon as the season starts because I don't have time to like play through the game and unlock all these people. True. So it's, I mean, it is what it is. But that's E3. It was, it was great. And, and uh, I mean, it's going on for two more days. I'm going to try and swing back around there today and uh, and check more stuff out that I didn't get to check out. But yeah, we ha- we have a big show today. We have a big show. But before we get Huge. to the before we get to No Holds Bar, I just want to remind everybody that we have a new show airing on Friday this week called Late Fees. We'll have a, a little special teaser video dropping tomorrow, uh, created by my homie Wes. And we're really excited about the show. The first episode is going to be about Steven Spielberg, uh, the Ballad of Crooked Steven. Uh, it's really funny. I listened to it yesterday. Uh, I'm, I think you guys will love it. It's airing on Friday. It's called Late Fees. It'll be airing, I believe, probably before RSBN drops. Kind of between Perfect Play uh, and RSBN. We gotta like kind of tighten up, like not tighten up, but kind of like rearrange our Friday schedule. But we'll be we'll be keeping you guys informed of what's going on. We also have a new RNC Radio dropping this week too, right, Mills? Yep, we got new RNC Radio dropping this week, so stay tuned to that playlist. It's going to be revamped entirely. Um, yeah, a bunch of new shit, man. All right, so check. make sure you check us out on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud, because we're, we're there for you on, you know, on everything, because that's what we do. We do it for the people. But speaking of doing it for the people, first topic and no holds barred, the New Day is finally doing it for the people, and they're going to face the elite in Street Fighter Five, <laughs> it's the biggest cross promotional <laughs> wrestling event that's ever happened in the wrestling world since God, I don't even know when. When when's the last time you've seen a, a cross company it, it battle to the likes of this? Uh, probably never because they're. they're I, mean, I mean, this has been teased a lot, and um, I don't know if you knew this, Mills, but Xavier and Kenny Omega have faced each other at. Oh yeah, yeah, the, I've, I've they, known. Yeah, they, they face each other at a lot of different um, fighting game tournaments, like CEO and, and, and things of the like, uh, and Street Fighter Five. And they're huge gamers. They're huge, and they're and they're really good friends. Um, I believe the the challenge was, was laid down by Xavier, and they said there would be a three on three team battle uh, 
because Street Fighter V has a team battle mode. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the new arcade edition update and they're going to play that at e3 tomorrow i believe on thursday but i think the most surreal part about this is that wwe.com not only has a video that they put up today about this but they also have an article about it with kenny omega and the young bucks and it featured prominently on their website if you would have told me three four years ago that this was going to be possible again unreal I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it probably would be unreal. But at the same time, it's like, I, I'm so glad. That, first of all, I believe, like, the website is its own entity. <laughs> like, well, it, it, used to, it, it wasn't like that for a while, though. Right, right. It's, but I feel like at this point now, it's like its own, like, if, if it showed up on television, like, if they promoted this on television, like, on SmackDown, it was like, make sure at E3, blah, 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 then I would be like, holy fuck. Yeah, but the the website's been its own entity for so long. Been talking to insider stuff. I don't even th I don't even know if Vince checks it crazy. Probably not. Um, but man, they just been doing a great job. There's a whole two minute video on just the new day and and Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks interaction. It's on their YouTube. I think this is what people are going to want to see. Like it's a, it, it it's insane. It's insane for me that Kenny Omega is even actually doing this after the, what he went through at dominion but i know it's, yeah, it's, I know. it's uh it's listen it's a great cross promotional battle i love it i love i'm probably going to is it going to be streamed yes it will be streamed i believe it'll be on capcom's uh capcom usa's uh twitch account i'm not sure of what time it will be uh maybe i can check if, if i had to guess it's probably new day is probably going to win if oh no Ken, to... kenny's really good but Xavier and, and to me, Actually, Kofi's been like one of the like elite gamers in the WWE for like the last like decade and a half. Kofi, Kofi is good. Uh, I, I did watch their when they revealed the team battle mode in Street Fighter Five uh, a couple of months ago before the arcade edition update came out. Uh, they did play that, and I Kofi is he, he's solid. I will say it. He's listen, solid. Listen, it, for the past, remember when they used to have those WrestleMania like video game tournaments like every year. And then it would be like Shelton Benjamin wins like the first five years. And then like Kofi Kingston wins like the next five years. And it's just like, first of all, besides proving that black people play a lot of video games and are really, really good at it and are better than you, most likely. Yeah. It proved that Kofi Kingston is like, to me, a beast of a gamer. Like to me, at least. for someone who has a kid and, and, and has a whole job and all this other shit. I don't know how he became so damn good at these shit. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, he used to beat Punk's ass on, on Punk's uh, bus back in the day. Listen, come for the smoke. You got to listen. That wouldn't be the first time he got his ass beat, I'll be honest. I missed it. I missed the chimney. Speak uh, <laughs> Speaking of Punk, uh, also make sure you check out our retrospective on CM Punk versus John Cena from Money in the Bank 2011. He dropped that on Monday. Uh, so if, if you need any type of, uh, any type of, inspiration to get you through that long ass money in the bank card on, on sunday uh, make sure you listen to that show as well right um, yeah if you want to hear our ufc 225 thoughts as well it's on that one so um, yes sir uh speaking of big fights big time fights uh new japan pro wrestling had their dominion show uh on saturday morning uh, and i thought it was it was an excellent show i, I really like the show a lot um we're just just let's just like kind of run down the top three matches here uh mm -hmm. you watch the show correct i did watch the show i watched most of the show all right so uh i i, I guess from the from the from the top but the uh the, the top three matches on the card hiromu takahashi versus will osprey uh with, with takahashi taking home the junior heavyweight championship really love this match i think the right guy won takahashi's a, a, a great fucking junior heavyweight champion and a great fucking junior wrestler on the on the on the whole roster i think it's been very 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 like past due for him to get that title back. I don't feel like he should have lost it in the first place. Dude, what'd you feel? What'd you feel about that match? I thought it was cool. <laughs> it was cool. I'm not the biggest Will Offspring fan. So it's like, uh, a lot of his stuff just seems like too like, like there's choreograph and then there's choreograph, you know what I'm saying? But it's yeah. like, I'm not the biggest Will Offspring fan. So I thought it was cool. I thought it was a, a good back and forth, especially, you know, the time it went, all this other stuff, it's placed on the card, all this other, you know, I, I thought it was good. I thought it was fair. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, uh, I, I really like that Takahashi, his, um, his gimmick is basically balls to the wall. 
I don't give a shit. I'm just going to kill myself to get, get over here. Like I really like his, his like lack of care about, and this is really bad to say, like he has a lack of care about his own well being, mm-hmm. and that's his character. And I, I think it, it translates really, really well. Like he does that fucking, that, that sunset flip over the top rope uh, into the power bomb move. That move, fucking looks like it's insane but i mean will osprey does just as, as much crazy stuff and and i think for someone i'm not a huge fan of either i think that they both delivered on that match um the next match uh tetsuya naito versus chris jericho for the ic title which i thought was a tremendous match it was i thought it was phenomenal i thought it was way better than the uh jericho omega match from january i thought it was a thought listen the, from the opening moments for the attack i think chris jericho is really trying to be put over the fact that he's a major ass and um i mean it's working I, I love the finish i love pretty much most things about this match i think it was an incredibly solid match as you said a better showing than the tetsuya naito versus um uh, okada match uh a few months back and <clears throat> the the intercontinental championship changing hands um which, another great moment for chris <laughs> which i called uh, when, when we talked with mac last week because i was like there's no reason you don't want to have a big star like jericho and have him lose uh twice and mm-hmm. i felt like and i always felt like on the way you know of course we're, to this main event you wanted to keep kenny omega strong Right. Going into going into this main event, and I think you know just the way they book things, you wanted to have Kenny win because and not have Jericho have that U.S. title, which is literally flown into purgatory since Omega dropped it. But uh, with with Jericho taking the IC title, it means he's going to be in New Japan for the for the time being. Uh, I think at least until Russell Kingdom next year uh, in January. To, to be honest, I think he's going to at least do a couple of shots in the G1. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's a, it's a good look for, for new Japan. And I think like it leaves the door open for Jericho to even show up in WWE still. <laughs> I think, I think it's, it would be crazy if he did that. Did you watch his brief little interview clip regarding the decisions he's made regarding his career on why he works in new Japan and while he'll never work in the United States? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's all loyalty and I, and I think it's really cool and it's really dope that he says, you know, I will not work. Uh, he, he, he says he slap in the face to Vince if he worked in the United States somewhere and also like to value. So he says he's not going to be at all in, he's not going to be at all these other indie shows. I guess he doesn't really want to, he's, he's able to sort of plan his career accordingly and, and his value goes down if he starts, uh, you know, going on the circuit and really doing all these shows. And he knows that, you know, chances are people aren't going to be able to pay for him. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he said he's made more money in these, these last few shots than he's, he's made in, you know, comparatively to his career. And I think that it's, it's a cool way to, to have a veteran wrestler going around and being like a mercenary. Like that's the way I look at it. Like he's like a a Ronin and he's going to new Japan and infiltrating and, and really shaking things up. And I think the match was great. I, I really think that Jericho changing his style to that of like a, a, a brawler in the kind of like the, uh, in the, in the sense where he's just like, he's dropped all the technical aspects and he's just straight having matches where he cheats and he's, he's he basically using closed fists and he's, he's doing everything he can to win. And again, you mentioned the finish. I love the finish using the low blow behind the ref's back uh, into the cold breaker. I thought it was a great way for Nido to drop the belt, which he's only held for one month. I, it, it felt transitional when he won it last month anyway. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think it, it's going to lead for lead to Nido going back for the IWGP heavyweight title. And it looks like it's going to be Jericho versus evil um, going forward. So uh, we, we originally had a over under on, on how long Kenny Omega versus uh, Okada would last two out of three falls on limited time. I said 45 minutes it just goes to show the old, by the 45 minute mark, there was only two falls at that point. Yeah. I mean, honestly, two, you know what? The, for a match that was an hour long and still took me kind of the span of two days to sort of watch um, just based on my busyness and all this other stuff. I think it was a well-paced match. Like for being for an hour long match, I, I can easily say this is probably one of the best hour long matches that I've sort of sat through and just been like, Oh, something is happening sort of at every turn. Right. Um, there were, they didn't really leave too long of a space where it's just like rest holes for 10 minutes or exchanging things. Like it, 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 it really sort of managed to carry it, it managed to keep a pulse throughout the entire hour and change. And even the, I was surprised two minutes after each fall, I was like, Whoa, Holy shit. 
Yeah, I, I really like that. That um, I like idea. it because I can get a drink or something. I can get a drink. I can grab something to eat. You can clean up after your dog or, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, some other shit. But you know what? I, I love the match. I really did. It's probably one of my best, my favorite matches of the year. Yeah, it, it is definitely uh, up there with me. It, and, you know, again, I, I said, like, Kenny Omega, when it, I, I'm waiting for him to turn it on. I've been waiting for him to turn, you know, turn the best bout machine back on. And he did it here. Just the facials and, and the actual story. I love the final fall. Like, the final 15, 20 minutes of that match uh, mm-hmm. where the final fall is being decided, where they're tired and they're slapping each other. They have no energy left and they're doing everything that they can. I really, really like that sequence. It's better than the other sequences that they did that with, even in last year's match, even though I, I prefer that. I still think that's their best match, uh, the Dominion match from last year. Um, this match just really showed that these two have really great chemistry. I was even able to, to kind of get over the my issues with Okada and his match is seeming the same here because there were so many spots that were different. And uh, Kenny was able to kind of, you know, when you wrestle four times, Mm-hmm. You got to come up with something different, and they yeah. managed to do it. They managed to do it this time. Like the tombstone on the apron was crazy. Tombstone Later. on the apron. Okada passing out after his tombstone. Like he couldn't really get it. It, it, it was like shades of um the, the last match where uh, Kenny collapsed mid. Um, gosh, what's the name of uh, it? Rainmaker? Yeah, Rainmaker. Like it. Yeah. It, it was a listen callbacks everything it's a yeah. fantastic match loved it and of course the right person won uh, I, and I, I said this to someone on twitter the uh last week i was like this is you know if, he, if kenny wins this is the end of a very frustrating uh road to the top for a top guy because i do feel like kenny omega's rise was, was frustrating i i, I yeah, still have issues was long overdue yeah yeah i i do i still have issues with the way his 2017 really shook out um after such a stellar 2016 and I, but I do feel like they're trying to write the course and correct the course. I, I do, and I, I'll, I'll sit and stick with this right now. Like I, I, I really think this might be like his last hurrah in New Japan. I think this might be his, his final couple months there. Despite him not saying that, despite uh, him saying that, you know, his contract's up, and and I think people need to start reading between the lines about the coverage and the way that WWE writes about him. I think people mm-hmm. should start reading between the lines. I, I really think that this. This belt, him having the belt, is not just for him to have the belt. I think it's for a large storyline. I think it's the large storyline is the storyline that will eventually lead him out. Mm. But we'll get to that when it when it's time when 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 the fall comes. We'll get to that. Uh, let's go into actually no. There's one more thing. Uh, ROH is going to, to to Madison Square Garden. Shout out to them. I was, it's, 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 do, you um, go, do you go to Madison Square Garden? I've never been. So I've went to Madison Square Garden a couple times. Usually WWE, they used to have more shows there before they opened the Barclays and they kind of came exclusively Barclays, but they really they have these like they'll have like a summer and a holiday house show that are just like off the charts. Like the holiday the house show coming up this summer, I think The Undertaker is gonna be on it. And hey, Rhonda. Um, and and Rhonda, so I may go because you can really just buy tickets anywhere. It's not really like a high profile thing. Um, I like me. Last time I went to MSG, me and Carlos, we literally bought tickets like three hours before we went. Um, it's a it, it's a it's a it's a nice. It's kind of old, but it's like it, it is <laughs> what it is. Like it's classic. Um, it's a classic arena. We we managed to we managed to uh, actually we managed to so we bought tickets and then our friend gave us his like special uh, suite tickets so we were just in the suite and people were feeding us and all this other shit I was like holy fuck man this is the life I don't know if I could do MSG another way now yeah <laughs> I, I, I like that um, <clears throat> I like that ROH is doing this I think it's huge for them just just thinking of how far they they've come they used to just do the Manhattan Center and. I, I think this also leads more credence to the fact that Madison Square Garden is not very happy with WWE right now. <laughs> but can they pack? Can they pack Madison Square Garden? I mean, you, it's not hard to pack it, but still, uh, like, you I, need, they might they might they might cut off some some uh, seats. You think they'd have they to might? cut out a lot of fucking seats because right. you, you Madison Square Garden fits about close to th- I want to say between twenty five thousand thirty thousand people. Um, that's where the, the Knicks play there too, right? The Knicks play there, and yeah. <laughs> don't remind me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've only went to like one Knicks game in my life. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it, 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 they're going to have to like shut out a lot of that if they, if they do that, you know, but you know, more power to ROH MSG, the continual evolution, the continual step up, the gradual progression in their company. I think they're pretty, I think it, down in history, I don't know if they'll get any bigger than they are or they were, or are they are now at this point in their life. I don't know if they'll ever truly be competition. Yeah. I think the niche is just really just being like, an alternative version but still, of, of, but I mean, but still entertaining. They're, they're clearly to me a number two. Yeah, they're number, they're number two. two. They're like, they're number two. There's been a boom in, in in just independent wrestling and wrestling you can find on the internet just because of the social media and 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 just a, a lot of it comes from WWE bringing in these stars from these outside independent companies and people wondering or people looking up all their old stuff and people wondering where they came from and realizing that there's a whole other life outside the WWE. And it was kind of like what happened with the independent explosion in the mid two thousands when I was watching ROH and I was watching, you know, all those other, you know, independent brands and looking for all the stars that are currently in the WWE today or on TNA or Lucha Underground or whatever. So it's a, it's a constant consistent build, but I don't know if they'll ever become big, but they're good at this point. They're doing well at what they're doing. Yeah. And, and I want to clarify number two in the U S cause I mean, I think number two, obviously in the world is new Japan, but, um, Yes, that that's that's a cool thing for them. I wonder what the card's going to be. Obviously, Young Bucks in in Madison Square Garden is going to be huge. Uh, I'm sure they'll try and squeeze as many people as they can on that on that card. But big look for all which I I I would love to see what that card looks like. Uh, how how deep do you want to get into Raw and SmackDown this week? I, I think there are two shows. One obviously better than the other. I I did not enjoy Raw again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm as you said, I opted not to fully watch Raw and watch it E3. You know sony conference on games i have no idea about so that kind of shows you um what i thought about raw if i have any quick notes from raw it's um the brief little naya and ronda exchange that was interesting did not like it i didn't like it i don't think you have naya i don't like having naya tap out yeah her tapping out too early but the guy who rang the bell man oh (laughs) why did he ring the bell but as soon as he did it, i was like nigga who rang the bell (laughs) Sorry, I did it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man! Once again, uh, <laughs> I was like, on. "Bro, who rang the bell?" I was like, "People getting too antsy around here. Like, it's a who rang the whole bell? Like, it's a, <laughs> but, insane." Uh, but I, again, I, I like the segment. I like I like Ronda's delivery. I but listen, she's cons- she's getting really good at this. She's getting better. She's getting much better. She's she, it's is. With every week that passes by, she's become more comfortable in the ring. She's more comfortable on the mic in terms of saying things. Uh, I was reading one of um, the articles on Uprocks by Brandon Stroud, um, his Monday Night Raw review, and he was sort of talking about how the entire sort of how they're going to mix Natalia into this. And he made a note that I think Natalia had her had the wrong knee taped up this week. Yes, she did. <laughs> Which is either, as he said, is either a major oversight and you got the laziest writers on earth or it's just like Storyline. long storytelling. And I was just like, huh, this could be interesting. So that has me intrigued. Um, I love the Fatal 4 women's match. Talk about Raw starting off at the high point and really never recovering after. Hey, uh, Ember, Moon, Ember Moon's really dope on the main roster. I she's, think she's good, a, man. She's a rare occasion of someone who got better when she got called up and i can't i can't say that for many people well maybe elias i think yeah i think she just fits in sort of a larger than life atmosphere especially with her gimmick um i think kids probably find it's cool um it it, it, the way the moves that she does is cool i think maybe just the fact that it's a larger than life gimmick it's maybe at times it seemed larger than nxt because there's all these sort of theatrics that go on going into it and and nxt really isn't about that usually everything with theatrics kind of like falls flat on its face in nxt Mm -hmm. or um but on this main roster i mean she's really soaring and, and having really these great moment she hasn't really won a the big big one since her debut but she's she's having these moments yeah i think i think the title is is in her future like immediate future uh whether she uh whether she 
get wins of money in the bank or not. And I guess we'll get to that a little bit later, but I really like the, the finish. I, I, it made me want a Sasha Banks and Moon feud immediately. I think they have really good chemistry together. I thought so too. I mean, I'm both of them really don't care about their bodies. So they kind of just throw themselves at one another. And I thought it was, I thought it was a great match. Um, is there anything else from Raw? No, not really. I mean, the B team won. Shout out to them. They Whatever. Been <laughs> jobbers. Um, Roman Reigns beneath Sunil Singh. They've cooled off on the Roman Reigns thing, man. They were just. Yeah, this he's entire really cooled is, off. Yeah, the entire. Like, you barely. You forget he's on the show, and he's really supposed to be one of the attractions on the show, but you really forget he's actually on the show. And the, the, we're supposed to believe that he's about to be uh, in the main event at SummerSlam? That, is that what I mean, they can always heat him back up. I mean, they could heat him back up. All you really need, we still have extreme rules after, after you know, money in the bank. They could always heat him back up. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I mean, we're looking at like a Jinder Mahal, Roman Reigns extreme rules match. So let's just be probably, clear here. <laughs> for the universal title. And let's everyone just, just like clear. groans at the, you know, at the same time. Um, you know what? How, how do you feel about it looks like they're trying something out with the riot squad and them actually being like something, you know, like Big disruptors. I think it was, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Them being actual disruptors. Like they, they tatted the R on Bailey's stomach. They've been going around cutting people's ties and all this other bullshit. Like they're actually trying to put like character in them. Yeah. Something along those lines, just a disruptance of the force in WWE. And I think, okay, about damn time because i feel like for the most part nothing's really been done with it um cool i mean it's taken eight months uh i think that this is a larger play with bailey i i also do when i mentioned that i I, they've completely dropped the uh the bailey sasha thing it's done i I think i think this week proves it i i think bailey's moving on to the riot squad and She's I gonna have a friend, and it's gonna be Sasha, and then they're gonna nah, no, no, this no. Is I think this is I, I think I think Sasha's moving to I I think Sasha's either moving to Ember or she's gonna move to a title program after running the bank. This is stupid. Like it's a it's it, it's just the, the the lack of you know what I think Bailey deserves better. Do you feel like Bailey deserves better, or do or are you like mm, that was never you know? I don't know who to blame anymore, and I don't want to point blame. That's that's where I'm at right now. That's I true. think I think on both ends, it a ball has been dropped. I don't know who. I don't know what. I don't know because the thing is, we, what if Bailey did something. You know, what if that's some, what if these are her ideas? Like, I I, I have no clue. Like I can't point a I can't point a finger in any any direction. But like. She eats pinfalls like nobody's business. So, right. I mean, at the end of the day, why even argue that this character deserves anything? They, well, they, there have been women that have leapfrogged her over the past year. 100%. Well, Ember Moon has leapfrogged her as far as importance. It could be a case where essentially the four horsewomen now are essentially the women's veterans on Raw when you count out Natalia. So it could be a sense of, all right, we're trying to rebuild this new generation of women and we need sort of these other generation of women who have who have had these WrestleMania matches, who've had had all these things to sort of put them over. So it, it could be, you know, establishing, you know, just new people. Maybe it is Bailey's time is essentially over. It could potentially be. Maybe she had her moment. She was women's champion at some point. So it was definitely a moment. And maybe it's just over for the for the time being. And I'm and I'm fine with that. I, I don't I'm not gonna down a hill for Bailey. I'll just be <laughs> clear. I'm just not gonna down a hill for Bailey. I th- I think that she had her time. I think obviously of the two, Sasha's the more uh the more the one that the fans kind of interact with more mm-hmm. and, and they they attach themselves to. But Bailey, I'm not that's not to say she's completely done. She could always be heated up in, right. in much the same way that Roman Reigns can. So I don't think it's over, but I'm not gonna say that she deserves better. I, I just, I, cause I don't believe it. <laughs> I, I don't believe it. I agree. Two more things. I would say the Sami Zayn, Bobby Lashley thing. Whew. I thought it was funny. God, bro. I thought it was bro. entertaining. 
I, it was their best. It was their best. It was the best out of the three. It's if if you yeah. look at this entire feud, and if they manage to put a video package for this, I will shoot someone at <laughs> because it does not need a video package to be done for this. But it's a it's, the fact it's gone on this long. I like how sort of I like Sammy. I really just do. Like he's really good as a heel. As a heel, he's great. He's good. He's amazing. My man is amazing. He made him run through the course for what, and then he kicks the shit out of him after it. <laughs> yeah, like what's I, not to like about that? I did. I really, I really dug the segment. I dig Sammy's promos. Uh, I, 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 but again, do not care for this feud at all, and I don't think the fans do either. But I mean. You got Bobby Cheers on Monday, mm-hmm. so that was that was something they were really feel like. But that that crowd, I think they were uh, where were they at on Monday? They were at they were in Memphis on um on on Tuesday. On Tuesday, so they had Little Rock. Yeah, Little Rock. They were fucking with Roman Reigns. Okay, <laughs> like Little they Rock. were they were they were loving him. Okay, Little Rock. All right, Arkansas. Get it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, and then there's some money in the bank stuff that I don't really care about. Um, yeah, I, I mean, whatever. Like the even the even the men's four way was like was still good, but it was like eh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, sure. Raw is raw. A uh, SmackDown was a was a good go home show. Rusev beating Samoa Joe was. I, I thought the right guy won. I'm not even gonna lie. After that haircut, yeah, the right guy won, man. <laughs> Oh my God! I've never since the Baron Corbin <laughs> haircut debacle. Never have I seen a haircut that I've disliked so strongly. Uh, you know what that haircut? You know what that haircut looks like? I'm gonna. I'm dating myself here. Have you ever heard a, of a show called Fantastic Max? No. I'm gonna Google it now. Gonna look Google Fantastic Max, and that is the haircut that Samoa Joe has. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 oh my god yo this he has, is on point he has the fantastic max haircut and i cannot unsee it <laughs> wow i really can't see it either yo you really pull this one out <laughs> you pull this deep cut out I, it oh shows god. you i am i am a i am a student of the television arts fantastic max is a very it's like a 90s uh like early nineties, I want to say. I, I used to watch it when I was a kid. Wow. Early nineties Hanna Barbera cartoon uh, wow. about a kid who could a baby who could travel like through space. <laughs> Thanks a lot for this, Pops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Fantastic Max. Uh, put it, Hulu. Holla at me. Put Fantastic Max back on. Back on. Oh Hulu. my God! Yes, but um, it's, SmackDown, a fucking amazing show, man. Like, yeah, I really, I really, I'm really liking it. It's it's back to the 2016. Uh, yeah, the the beginning tied to the end. The Money in the Bank matches. The fact that it, first of all they felt fresh because they were. Um, we had we had um Samoa Joe versus a uh, 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 uh Rusev felt fresh. Right guy won. Miz, right guy won. Miz got into some things. Miz gets into it with New Day, who's not even there, but taped their segment last week. They they oh. taped their they taped their segment and they show the segment as as the New Day are literally playing Fortnite <laughs> in LA. <laughs> that's hilarious. That is fucking hilarious. Like that um, segment aired while it's Xavier and Biggie were walking out to Fortnite to to play the Fortnite pro am on uh, that, Tuesday. That is amazing. Shout out to them doing that, having the foresight to do that. Um, the the big cast and the promo, not really feeling it, but you know, whatever. Uh, uh, I didn't like that at all. Again, that's another feud I, I don't care too much for, it, and I was optimistic suit. about it. It was the suit. I didn't like the suit. I mean, I'm sure he said things, but the suit just turned me off. He looked like a very, he looked like Donald Trump's body. Like, it, it just like if Donald Trump needed an enforcer. Um Daniel Bryan versus Shelton Benjamin, weirdly promoted, first time ever. <laughs> well, here's the thing: a lot of this SmackDown is first time ever. Yeah, <laughs> a lot it of it's gonna be. It first was time like ever. promote. It was like, and Daniel Bryan wins this match, and Shelton Benjamin beat Randy Orton two weeks ago, and I was just like, whoa, this is <laughs> this is strangely, <laughs> this oh, is Ray, like uncharacteristic. 
Randy Orton strangely not on the show for two weeks also. Yeah, I mean, this is like, I was like, whoa, this is uncharacteristically thought through. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this is something that was like, oh, they they want to give time to this. So it happened. Wasn't a bad match. Daniel Bryan wins with his new finisher, the heel hook. Um, probably should slap a, la- a slap a name on that. Um, we also had Nakamura and Jeff Hardy, which I, I thought they had really great chemistry, more than I thought that they it was would. Good, yeah, I thought so. I thought so as well. I think the people are so. You got to the point with Nakamura where the people are against Nakamura, and then you get to the point where people absolutely love people love Jeff Hardy until the end of time. Like, yeah, it's just people just naturally love him, and I love the finish. I love the low blow. I thought the low blow was the correct finish to go to. And he hasn't done it in a while. So yeah. it actually came out of nowhere. It was a surprise because he hasn't done the low blow and I want to say like a month. Yeah. But uh I, I Nakamura is just a natural asshole. Like him doing the the hardy pan signals outside mm-hmm. the ring. So, bruh, how, how what who is this guy? He is not the same guy from a year ago. Like it's it's crazy. I, I'm actually excited for this match on Sunday. And I I would love to see more Jeff Hardy, Shinsuke Nakamura. I think that that's I don't think that's done uh, in the least bit. Um, I love the 10 woman tag. It showed the entire depth of their division, which is great. Better than we thought it had any right to be. Again, I don't like, don't like Carmella tapping, uh, before the pay-per-view. I don't like it. Yeah. They could have made somebody else tap like someone who wasn't in the match and who's doing nothing at money in the bank and really had nothing to lose. Yeah. Um, you, you just don't do that. I, I think it, it, it looks bad for Carmella and also, it it kind of because the point of her entire feud has been I've beaten Oscar twice, even though she hasn't actually beaten Oscar. Yeah, I, I thought she was going to beat Oscar. I was, I was just like, whoa, is she going to kick the shit out of Oscar? Well, well, no, they they don't want to give that away, but it's like it puts doubt in my mind that Oscar's going to be winning that match on Sunday. Yeah. It, yeah, it puts a lot of doubt. But I mean, speaking of speaking of sun, Sunday and this weekend. Do you want to just go straight into it? I, th- I think it's. I mean, the money in the bank card. The money in the bank card is long. So let's talk let's, about let's it. Just we want to talk about NXT it. before. Or you want to get to money in the bank? Let's talk about NXT before. We can just right. run through NXT. I, I think I, I I haven't looked at the card. I, I literally just wrote it before we got on here. So I'll, these these uh, predictions are completely lucid. They're my first time actually calling these. I haven't thought about it beforehand. Mm-hmm. We're just gonna go straight into it. Uh, NXT Takeover Chicago will emanate. From the, uh, the 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 second city uh, on Saturday night, uh, we have a pretty stacked card. I, I think again, people are people aren't really talking about the show, but I think they always we always do this, and the show ends up you know breaking all uh, expectations. So first match on on this is the undisputed era of uh, Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly versus uh, Oni Lorcan and uh, Daniel Birch for the NXT Tag Championships. Uh, this is going to be phenomenal. I, I, and I think the storyline leading up to it is going to be great. I wouldn't be surprised if Pete Dunn got into, got involved in some way, shape or form. Uh, I think undisputed era is going to win, but I think this match is going to be, it would be a fucking tremendous, uh, match to open the show with. Listen, I feel sorry for Bobby fish because the fact you've been replaced by Roderick strong and Roderick strong is doing Roderick strong things in NXT right now. He's really, he's kind of, at his like own personal zenith in the WWE. Like he's been really yeah. performing at a very high level for, for quite a minute now. Um, between these two, I see 100%. I see an amazing opener. If they choose to go with the opener, it could really be between this and the, and the next match we're probably going to talk about, but I, it's just going to be a really good match. And I'm, I'm, it's surprising that they give this to Oni and Birch. Um, well, I, it was it wasn't team that came out and they they're not like a team that was like out of nowhere, but they kind of came out of nowhere, you know. I think a lot of it had to do with the timing of Danny uh, Danny Birch signing with NXT full time mm. and moving him up because now the thing is like I, I think you know you look at Danny Birch, he was a guy who always took the pinfalls and he never he never actually pinned anyone, mm-hmm. and now then the first like literally like the the week of the tapings after he signed, he pinned. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly in that six man in that, that six man match that was really great from NXT TV a couple of weeks ago and it was like okay they're moving him up and right. it's like this, this is he's finally getting that chance because he's actually finally on the roster and I think he'll this is this is going to be like his coming out party and also only only Lorcan's coming out party this is a guy who's never been on, the, on a takeover car before and this is his first time yeah and he's been in the WWE I mean he he came in he was originally Beth uh, Beth Music yeah 
um, for a very long time. He's been on NXT since 2015. He's now making his, I mean, he's debuted on the main roster briefly, but he's now making this NXT takeover debut. I think it's going to be a showing out party. These NXT takeovers, they tend to really sh- shine a light and then highlight and then create new stars as well. Because if there's any opportunity to show up and show out, it's these NXT takeovers. So, um, I'm still, if I had to pick a predictions, it's the undisputed era though. Yeah. It's not time. And if they do, I think they're going to get it right back. I, yeah. I think these are, that's a team that you, you can keep the titles on for a really long time. They can lose them for a while and they can get them back. And I, I think you just keep the titles on them. It just, it just makes more sense that way. Uh, the next match we're going to talk about is the King versus the Prince ricochet versus velveteen dream and what i think is probably the best built feud just off the offline uh, yeah. in, in the in the whole nxt roster right now of course you've had some really great segments between these two uh, over the past month you know ricochet doing crazy flips mm-hmm. and shit like that just to prove that he because he's better than ricochet and i and i like the story of these people they, they don't hate each other they they dislike each other because they want to be better than the other and, and i like and, that story yeah i feel like it's not done enough especially on the main roster um, is it because they usually find some other sort of trope to become to dislike one another about. But these two, they've been in handicap matches. They've been in they they've really kind of gone out the way and explore different avenues to put over this feud. I think Chicago is going to love it. Um, I think Chicago is going to fall in love with Velveteen Dream and fall in love with Ricochet. And I think just they're going to have an amazing match together. That's what. what? It's, my prediction, what do you think uh, Ricochet, not Ricochet, our Velveteen's going to have on his tights? Ooh. Um, not TM Punk. Um, uh. <laughs> uh, God. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? You obviously have an idea. I think he's got to have he's he's got to have the hot dog in the handshake on the tights. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to have the hot dog in the handshake. I love it. I love it. I mean, these two have been doing it on social media as well, so it's a it's a it's incredible. It's got to be that. It's got to be a hot dog on, on on the front, obviously, or on one leg and a handshake on the other. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Here we go. It's a hot oh dog. Oh my god! I, I love it. Who do you think is gonna win? Oh man, listen. Um, I've been going back and forth on this. I think you have Velveteen win this. I he think hasn't you have really Velveteen. Won a major match. He wasn't. He hasn't really won a, a, a takeover match. I believe he won. He beat uh, Ono. Oh yeah. But, um, Everyone beats Ono though. Yeah, <laughs> I think. I don't think it hurts Ricochet for him to lose. I think Ricochet is going to go on to. I, I honestly think. And I, I'll, get to that, I'll, I'll get to that later, but I, I think you have Ricochet lose and go on for the the North American title after uh, after the undisputed era done with the Brits. So here's what I think: I think Ricochet is going to win. <laughs> okay. I think Ricochet is going to win and then do as you said and go on to the North American Championship. But I think he's going to win this match. It's a, you, but you can't really you can't really be mad at the result. Like it's no, like, I listen. I wouldn't be upset if either man won here. Uh, I think that. Obviously, there, there's two different paths they can take. I mean, there's the only two paths they can take. And I think one in particular is going to take one path and the other is going to take the other. Uh, I, I Again, I don't think it hurts Ricochet to lose. I mean, he, he lost in January, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the ladder match. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that, that wasn't January. That was uh, mainly a weekend. I'm sorry. He, I mean, he lost the ladder match. So it's like it doesn't really matter for him to, to lose again. I, I'm, just, I'm just like confused as to where EC3 fits into this because he's not on this card. And I, I'm... I would imagine that, like, if you say, you know, Ricochet does win, he moves on to EC3, correct? That, that would be the, the natural progression of, of the, the mid-card to upper mid-card there. I mean, we'll, we'll have to find out. I mean, EC3 could move on to Johnny Gargano. You never know. Oh, that, yeah. that, would, that would be crazy. <laughs> um, the next match, uh, Nikki Cross versus Shayna Baszler in NXT Women's Championship. This, this match kind of formulated itself in two weeks here. It was it's kind of a, a fast build. It doesn't need to be a huge build. I think, I think Nikki Cross speaks for herself uh, as far as her, how talented she is. And I do like the, the story twister playing with Shayna Baszler being the bully and now being bullied by someone crazier than she is. Yeah, I like it as well. I've seen, I've watched it on NXT full. I've watched it full down on NXT for the last couple of weeks. It's been really, really good. Um, Nikki Cross, 
I I think this might also be her singles debut on. Well, no, she was in that no. film, right? But it's in, in a one on one match, I think. Um, but I think this is the opportunity for her to show out as well. She's kind of unorthodox. Um, Shayna Baszler has had these sort of moments. We haven't really seen sort of a, a major inter. Well, actually, we'll probably see it this week on NXT. Um, but you know, it's a. I think both. I think Nikki Cross has not a lot to prove, but I think she. This is the opportunity for her to show out before, and I think her NXT days are slowly going to be behind her after this match. Yeah, I, I think they waited to call her up. Honestly, might be waiting to call Sanity up until she was done with this feud. Yeah, I think it, it's it's looking so because that's the only really I can see as sort of the send home thing. I think they've done it before with a few other women where they give them this big opportunity and then they send them out. So, um, listen, it, it, it'll be good for Shayna. Shayna can be the one who's like, I, I took Ember Moon to the limit and I, and she made her leave NXT and also did the same to Nikki Cross. So what makes you think I won't do the, do it to the rest of you guys. Yeah. And then have a uh, Kyrie saying or somebody come out and that'll be the next, the. Uh, the next part, the the, the next storyline. Yep. I think I think uh, Shanda Bay was winning. I think yep. it would be. I'm I'm not sure what to think of the match yet. I don't know really what it will look like, but we we shall see on um, that match. I but I mean Shana, I again love her, tremendous talent. I, I mm-hmm. think it'll be. I think it'll be a good match. Uh, the next match, I I've, I've heard. Of, I'm not hearing a lot of people make too much noise about this match and. You know, this this kind of falls into the same uh, gray area of the NXT title not really being like the biggest thing on the show. Like once you win it, it's kind of like prestigious, and you, mm-hmm. you have it, and it's, it's there for your resume. But this is for the guy who has who has that title to be ready to kind of be shipped up. But uh, Alistair Black versus Laura Sullivan for the NXT Championship. I think they pers- purposely have done this instead of not making it the biggest match it could possibly be because they want most of the attention on the main event, which looks like Gargano versus Champa. And to me, if you're doing that and if you're sort of pulling back, you give another guy an opportunity. I like Lars Sullivan in this sort of match. Mm-hmm. Um, he's I, a true heel. He's, he's yeah. one of the only true heels on that show. I, I, I like Lars Sullivan in this match. I like Aleister Black. I think they're going to do, I think it gives Aleister Black a different type of challenge and really the NXT Championship a different type of challenge because when's the last time a major sort of hoss has gone for the NXT Championship? Right. It's, it's, it's been a minute. So I think it, it, it 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 adds a different perspective. It adds a different, you know, way to look at things. I think, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to this match despite it be seen being kind of like quietly kept away. And I'm sure maybe Chicago isn't. Um but I think I, Mark I, Sullivan will show out. I just want to see what, what, what Alistair's able to to do. Um what Alistair's gonna be able to do with Laurel. He he's done some some great things with, with different opponents and mm-hmm. i think what he did with adam cole was great obviously what he did with the dream is great uh what he did with almost was great like listen he hasn't had a bad match no and i think and, and i think <laughs> i think like people like he, he's kind of i i love alistair i love his look i i really love his matches i'm waiting for that one match to take him over over the top and the almost match almost got there yeah um, and the the cold match is still my favorite match of his of the year you know, I don't think it's going to be this match. Yeah, no. But I think it, it will be a great... I, I would liken it to uh, the old Sting versus Vader matches. That's what I would want this to be uh, mm. style-wise. The old Sting versus Vader matches. I think those matches were great. And I think if they play that type of big man versus little man uh, thing, it'll be sweet. And I think it'll be a really good match. I, I don't think... I think he's incapable of having a bad match. And I think he'll carry or, or help carry Laura Sullivan. So, like, a really, really strong match here. I agree. Yeah. Um, so if I prick Alistair Black to win, by the way. Oh yeah, Alistair Black's gonna win. I I don't have him losing it. Uh, I don't have him losing it until. And I guess we can talk about it now. I think if if Dream does win uh, against Ricochet, I think we're gonna get Dream versus Black too and Brooklyn. Mm, I like it. And I and I think you'll have Dream win the title there. And I think you'll have them go back and forth with the title for uh, the fall. I I would buy that. Yeah. I I would do through I would do a trilogy uh I would do a trilogy between them two have to have the second match in Brooklyn and then have them do a match that NXT hasn't had before a last man standing or something like that uh at, at the fall uh takeover and or have I black quit or something yeah I quit match or something like that I I really I don't think that the black 
Dream feud is over and it shouldn't be over. And I, I really would love to see another match uh, and just come full circle with that whole storyline. And I, I think it would be really amazing. It's, even if, if not that, um, I think Lars goes goes down and faces Ricochet, mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, and I, I I don't think they give it to EC3 that quickly. Because I think that they gave Adam the the U.S. title because obviously he's gonna get the NXT title. They just they're just not ready for him to have it yet. You know, I don't even think they need to give NX three NX EC three. I don't even think they really <laughs> need to give him the belt. To be honest with you, I think to be honest with you, he should get some reps back in on the main on 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 NXT and then start plotting his way to the main roster. Right. Um, I think. He, he, he certainly has the chops for it. I think he's he's already been sort of on the main roster in itself. And I think he should, it, it, he could definitely rebuild his name in NXT, but I don't think it's necessary for him to have the championship. But I do think he's a contender in the next, possibly six over months? the next, yeah, over the next six months for sure. Yeah. I, um, man, I, I don't, I, I, I'm coming, I'm having a lot of, issues with trying to figure out who would be next for Alistair after this match. Uh, I mean, obviously top contenders again, dream Champa because they, because the thing is, and we'll get to, let's just go ahead to this, this match here. It's like Champa and Gargano on the same brand. Like where do they go after this match? To hell man. Like, is it- I think you're going to get one more. And, and, and like, and of course this is the Chicago street fight. And I think, I'll just off the top. I think, I think champ is going to win this match. And I think you're going to have to have the rubber match in Brooklyn. People are really tired of this of, of of this pairing, and I. To be fair, I'm not the biggest fan of the build this time. Um, I think it's I, mainly because it's really been and sort of what more can you do? That's how I kind of feel after this. It's really like, what more can you do after this? These guys have had a hatred for one another. It's drove one of them out of NXT and brought them back. They've they've gone to they've had color in this, which is very uncharacteristic for anything in sort of WWE now these days. They've really gone really to the extremes and back. And it, not only that, it's taken up a lot of time on the show, and it's it, it's it's on the main event as well. And I'm not mad that this is the main event or anything like that. It quite possibly deserves it, but I think everyone's ready to move on from this. Uh, yeah. It's become a few that sort of define both of their NXT careers at this point. And it's kind of like you remember DIY, but you don't really truly it, that's that's in the past. And this is what's now. And you really want to sort of begin to break away like, all right, what can Ciampa do if it's not against Gargano or how can Gargano sort of I mean, Gargano, we've seen him over the last year sort of battle all these stars and almost win the NXT championship and all these other things. So you really can see what he can do, but it's really like, yo, let's try something new. Let, well, let's we, freshen well, things up. Well, I think the match we do want, which we were robbed of was we, we want Gargano versus black. I think that's what, you know, that's what we want. And I think, mm-hmm. and I would hope that we'd still get that if only in between an NXT, you know, TV show, but I just don't know where they go after this. And that's why I think that we're going to get a third match. If and I, if I was to be a betting man, it'd be a hell in a cell match. That would have to be it. So I feel yeah. like, I don't know, but I feel like they shut it down after this match, just to be honest with you. And I don't think um, NXT is going to do hell in a cell. I think they probably do a cage match um, before they do in a hell in a cell. But hell in a cell would be the next step. Like the that, way this is escalating. It's like that would naturally be the next step. So from here, to be honest with you, with NXT Chicago, I would end it here because it's kind of like where it started too. True. But like, I just got this feeling. The reason I'm not super excited for this is because I really have the feeling that this isn't over. So whatever happens here doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, and it all depends on the finish as well. It's like, You've got Candice LeRae hanging out somewhere. You got EC3 hanging out somewhere. He, you've hinted at that as well. I mean, our friend yeah. Ben was just like, "Yo, shout to Ben Coyle." Like, "Yo, I think Candice is going to turn on Johnny." Yeah, and, and I was like, "No way!" And then I saw her tweet talking about, I, "I can't stand to see him become what he hates." And I'm like, 
holy shit, she might really just turn. But I don't think she's going to turn and go to Chomp. I don't think she's going to turn. I think she's just going to cost Johnny the match or something. I feel like yeah. she'd do that just to be like, yo, we need to end this. Like, this is like tearing. It, 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 there's so many different factors that could end to the, that could, you know, result in this. But it would just be interesting in how it goes. Yeah, I, I again, I, I think my issue with the match is that it doesn't feel final. And to be honest, and to their point, they haven't built this as final either. Yeah. So I think Chomp is going to win because you don't have you don't have Gargano beat him twice and then and then have it keep going. You have Chomp a win, have Gargano go away for a while, uh, maybe give Chomp with a title shot on NXT TV that Gargano was supposed to get and then have Gargano screw him out of that. And then you and then that's when you have the build for uh, Brooklyn, because I mean, when you look at it after this, they have the the UK shows and you really only have like maybe six weeks to build to take over Brooklyn. Yeah. So, I mean, you get, you're, you're going to have to get that match out quickly, but I, I do think it's going to, hey, listen, I think it's going to be a phenomenal match. These guys can do that. That's like one set of tapings, isn't it? What? Because, uh, yeah. Because next week they're probably going to show some recap show. Um, yes. I don't know when the next set of tapings are, but the next set of tapings, the next set look. of tapings are the 21st. So the 21st will, it'll like, when you think about it, uh, they might be doing matches that will air from the Royal Albert Hall, Royal Albert Hall match or the Royal Albert Hall yeah, show. Two sets of tapings. We still got two sets of tapings left, so they've got some. They've got some wiggle room. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think it'll be a great match. Can't wait to see it. I think NXT is going to be a, a tremendous show. I'm. I can't call it. I can't say. Oh, this seems like it's going to be less than New Orleans. Because every time we say that, we end up get, being proven wrong. So we'll we'll see what happens with that show. Um. But listen, Money in the Bank, 2018, 10 matches. 10 matches. It's a four-hour card now. Kickoff show starts at 6, show starts at 7, ends at some time that we have no idea about. It, it ends whenever the fuck they want it to end. Yeah, and it really does because, listen, I've got work in the morning and they've just been dragging it on. And then after that, we got smack talk or raw talk or post show, which honestly, they should just bring back the – from the NBA Finals, I'm like, man, these press conferences, man, they should just do something like that. That'd be hard. I, w- I would fuck with that. Uh, let's let's just start it. Let's, but let's WWE start has no like, actual press; like, it's just guys in press suits asking questions. <laughs> they'll, they'll probably get like, uh, who's who's that? Who's that redhead? Sam Roberts to do this. <laughs> oh my! Uh, God. Let's run through it. Yeah. The pre-show matches are going to be the Bludgeon Brothers versus the club. Uh, Bludgeon Brothers, I don't, do we have to speak? Do we have to talk a lot? About nah, this? I don't even think the match is going to be good. Yeah, Bludgeon Brothers, uh, five minutes. Give them five minutes. Um, Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass. The silence there shows you just the yeah. apathy you have about that. Like I, I, I get a lot of these matches on this card, I, I just, I, I'm struggling to care about. It started out good. And then it kind of, you got to depend on the fact, oh, right, most of the rosters are in these ladder matches. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then it's also like, wait, this is this is a co-branded pay-per-view, so even the a lot of the other guys are probably not even going to get on either. Yep. Damn. All right. And, and that's kind of how you sort of treat it. But Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass, um, Cass is winning. All right, I don't want to really got to talk more about that, man. Cass is probably going to win. I'm going to say Daniel Bryan wins just because I was... 2-0? 2-0? Just... Oh? Oh? Cass is an idiot. <laughs> 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 I'm just like, what's the point in letting him win? Like, to, to, to build him up for what? For nothing. What are we uh, building him towards? This is true. This is true. Uh, I, I guess. Is it AJ Styles? Like, what are we doing? Like, are we building big cast AJ Styles for next month? Extreme Rules? Like, no. I mean, I don't even really think that, like, Brian got, like, a stellar match out of cast last time. But Nah. You got a match. You just get from point A to point B. Yeah, well, I don't know. Um, Yeah, sure. Whatever. I, I don't really care about this match. Yeah, uh, I mean, no one does. Seth Rollins versus Elias for the Intercontinental title. This is gonna be better than we think. I think. You think? Yeah, I think. I think so. Seth Seth Rollins is on this like very competitive high. Elias, to me, is not bad in the ring at all. Um, 
I'm wondering how they work everything into this match and if they get enough time. But I think if they get enough time, this could be a good match. Yeah, I, I give them 15 minutes. I think it'd be great. I think um, I just from the way Seth Rollins is doing anything, you don't take the belt off of him. No, no. Um, I think you take it off of him in Extreme Rules. If you're going to do the Brock match, Extreme Rules, which I, I'm holding out hope that they will they will really give us what we want there. But who knows? Elias could smash Seth Rollins with a guitar or something and lead into another rematch at Extreme Rules. Who knows, right? Yeah, that's cool. I mean, that'd be, that'd be fine. I mean, there's a long time between Extreme Rules and SummerSlam. There's a, I think there's another. We got another six week. Uh, <laughs> we've got another six week thing going on there between those shows. Right. So I think I mean, there's definitely time to to do that and and do it. But I think he's gonna drop the belt. I think it's imminent at least for him to drop the belt to someone. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, w- I don't think it's gonna be Elias. I think they see Elias where he is, and I think that it's not having a title. Right, right now, I don't. I don't think that's where they where they see him at right now. So Seth Rollins wins in a really good match. I think it'll probably, be, like you said, it probably might be better than what, what we think it's going to be. Uh, the next match is going to be Bobby Lashley versus Sami Zayn. I, I, there's, there's something I've, I've noticed uh, in a couple of these programs, two of these programs, and, and it's that one of the principal people in the programs they don't they don't really have any physicality going on. I really feel like something's going on with Sami Zayn. Well, there have been reports uh, that he's not, injured, actually. They've, yeah. I've seen reports that he's injured. Like, he's not. And that's the reason why they've gone to the to skits. Have him, yeah, the skits and the back and forth and all the other, and very less on the physicality. So, I mean, who uh, knows what uh, happens from there? I'm not sure how long this match is going to be if he is injured. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you. I know people are going to hate saying this because people really have like this love affair with with Sami Zayn mm-hmm. I think you have Bobby beat him in like five minutes just to just to shut the bully up but then uh, Chicago's gonna shit all over him man oh oh but they're gonna shit on him regardless mm-hmm. you know like they're gonna shit on him regardless I, I think these next two matches I mean they're gonna shit on it yeah they're, they're they really gonna kill it so well, unless, I, I, unless unless Sami Zayn gives them something to sort of go off of which I think it's possible we could have this long ass match but we could have this long ass segment before we have the actual match and the and and the match is the payoff to the segment who knows yeah you're right it could be yeah. a promo segment and then, yeah. and then Sammy tries to cheat and uh, Bobby outsmarts him again and I mean sure but I I, I do I I am concerned about Sami Zayn I have yeah. not seen him be physical in a while and uh I I Whatever's going on, I hope it's not serious. Right. Uh, the next match is Roman Reigns versus Jinder <laughs> Mahal. I, the, the most intriguing match on this show. I, I don't think it's going to close the show. If it does, they are more That'd be deep. wild. That would they be are, wild as fuck. All they right. are more <laughs> tone deaf than I would imagine if they should close the show on this. Would be crazy just just to close it on that. Um, just Roman. Just give it. Just just Roman. Roman by DQ. I would say that, or or a gender by DQ, whatever. I hmm. just, someone's gonna snap. It's yeah. got to lead to the extreme rules match. I think. I think they're gonna be going to extreme rules. I mean, yeah, it's gonna give. I don't think it's gonna be a good match. No, neither do I. I, well, I, I, I don't know. Ro- Roman, listen, I don't. Roman's Roman in twenty eighteen is not what Roman in twenty seventeen was. Roman's pretty good though. I mean, we just haven't seen Roman in these sort of. I don't know. We've seen him for the last year chase Brock Lesnar. And just whatever that match was at WrestleMania and at the greatest Royal Rumble ever. And how do you do against Samoa Joe? Was it good? No. No. <laughs> mm. No, it wasn't a good match. We, we, we talked 10 minutes about that match. We hated it. All right. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, get him out of here. End it. Bury it. Uh, I, I think geez, whoever wins, it'll be by DQ. Um, Carmella versus Oscar for the SmackDown Women's title. Very interesting match with a very interesting outcome. I don't think the I don't think the feud is hot at all. Mm-hmm. So um, I think they can go a lot of ways with it. I I, th- I don't think this will be the final match of it, regardless of who wins. Um, I don't. I really don't think you beat you beat Oscar. I don't think you have Carmella beat Oscar, and I don't think they're seeing that either. I think I, I think this is going to be yet another fuck finish in like a seven eight minute match. I think Carmella gets herself DQ'd. Yep, or she walks away, or she she purposely does something crazy or, mm-hmm. or, or I, I don't think you'd be Oscar here. I think, I think she does something to get herself DQ'd and lead it to extreme rules 
and have Oscar win the belt there. I don't think she wins the belt here. Not at Money in the Bank. No, no. I hope all these matches aren't set up for Extreme Rules because <laughs> this would be a shitty pay per view. Meals, Mio, I <laughs> listen. They have that's the issue with these these new pay per view structure and the and the way these pay per views are now. You have so much TV time to fill that you can't really like. You have to stretch these programs out, and and they haven't really found the perfect way to balance it yet. And hopefully, when they when they get these new deals and when SmackDown moves to Fox, they'll find a better way to do this because they'll you know they might have to split these pay-per-views up again, you know, mm-hmm. but um, right now it's just the way that it has to be for the, you know, the foreseeable future. Like I don't see a, I don't see a lot of blow offs on this show, you know, right. I don't see a lot of blow offs at all. 100%. Uh, next to run too. So let's, we could, we could run through the rest of these. Yeah. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, oh yeah. I forgot. You actually have a job. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nia Jax versus Ronda Rousey. Nia Jax versus Ronda Rousey. I think, God damn! Fuck. Who wins again? This? Again, it's gonna have to be a fuck finish here. You don't. I don't think they want to. I don't think they want Ronda to have the belt yet. I, I think they wouldn't have booked Ronda in this match if she wasn't gonna win the belt. Like, what's the wow. point? To me, what's the point of booking her in this match? They really could have just gone to Talia or something, or they could have really gotten anyone else. What's the point in having this entire match itself if she, if she wasn't going to be in the match? Like they they've done all this fanfare. She's about to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. All this other stuff. Like, what's the point of doing all that if you're not going to have her win the match? It just makes Nia look transitional. I think that's my issue. I mean, to be honest, Nia Jax before she actually won the belt. Was she all that, you know, was she someone who was focused on? She lost a lot of her matches against all the smaller women. So yeah, it's kind of true. like, it, it's kind of like, I, the only reason I see them putting this match on is if Ronda wins the belt. And then they sort of figure out how they're going to move from there. Um, but what's the big SummerSlam program out of that for, on Raw? It's just that's the Ronda case. and Natalia. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. Uh Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. 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 I can see that. I'll, I'll go with you on that. I'll say Ronda Rousey wins. I'll, I'll, I'll say, say Ronda wins. <laughs> I'll say, I'll, I, I agree with you there. Um, AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the WWE title last man standing. Uh, again, this, I mentioned this earlier. AJ Styles has not been physical. He has not done house shows for the past three or four weeks, which is leading me to think that he might lose this match. But the, the focus on the Jeff Hardy Nakamura thing makes me think that, Nakamura is going to lose this match and that AJ Styles is going to probably lose the lose the title extreme rules. So I'm going to say AJ Styles. I'm I want to say, I still want to say Nakamura, man. I still want to say Nakamura just cuz of we haven't seen much physicality from AJ. Um they're getting real hot on Nakamura, but then again, it's just like, oh my god, if they wanted him to win, they would have made him win already. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> it's a uh, it's it's a, it's confusing booking with Nakamura because it's like you don't they don't ever make him look weak you know <laughs> so it's like listen a last man standing match you don't even have to decisively put your mid person down exactly so that's what makes me think like AJ wins yeah it, it it could it could go to AJ so yeah I mean I think, by all means by the structures and rules of wrestling you know I'm gonna pick AJ Styles now I'm gonna pick AJ yeah I think AJ wins I I mean the thing is. The match, they say, oh, it's a match because Shinsuke's a great striker. I'm like, no, it's a match where Shinsuke can lose without being pinned. Yeah. And he doesn't look weak yeah. <laughs> because they never make him look weak. So I, I, th- I think AJ is going to win this match. Uh, Money in the Bank men's, I, this is going to be a tough one too. Uh, Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, The Miz, Rusev, Bobby Roode, Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, and someone from the New Day. Let's just say Big E. Do you agree? Yeah, I'm going to say Big E. Yeah, uh, Money in the Bank match. I'm going to go ahead and I'll... I'll go with my original prediction. I, I think people are sleeping on Finn Balor. I think Finn's going to win. I think, and and he could have quite possibly win. These matches are really just toss ups. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Samoa Joe. Okay. Okay. I'm going with Samoa Joe. Yeah. Depending on when this match lands, I would agree with you. Mm. Because I think the, you could have a cash in tonight. And that yeah, could, that's that what could, I think as well. That could write off your that could write off your AJ problem and your Nakamura problem it, it, easily. So I think it's, it's Samoa Joe. But then now, you know, everyone every, besides probably Bobby Roode, I pre- I, I kind of I, I I want all of them to win. Like <laughs> Braun doesn't the Miz. Braun doesn't need it. The, I, I, to me, it's fan of the Miz. To me, to me, it's either. 
All right, so you think it's a SmackDown guy is going to win or a Raw guy? Which one do you think? Because it's really just now you're playing on what's the long-term storyline for the roster, and it looks more like it would make more sense if a SmackDown guy wins it because a Raw guy, you're rarely going to see Brock. So it doesn't make any sense sort of like hinting towards like, I could cash it in, I could cash it in because yeah, like going to be at the show. a raw guy would have to be immediate, right? It would have to be literally. You have to be SummerSlam. Yeah, it would have you're to not be just SummerSlam. you're not just going to carry that briefcase around. I see what you mean. So I, I would say Miz. Then I'm going to go with either Miz or Joe. But I'm going to go first. I'm, I'm going to go on Joe. We should have a pool for this or something. I'd love to have that. I would love to have a pool for that. Um, I, I'll go Miz. I'll go Miz. Just, I'll to, go just Joe. To split even. I, I, you're you're right because the thing is like Raw has to have a they have to have an upper mid card feud <laughs> and, and someone with a briefcase it can't happen because brock isn't going to be there yeah so um yeah uh the women's money in the bank ember moon charlotte flair alexa bliss uh becky lynch natalia lana naomi sasha all right so this is a toss-up because it really could be anyone judging by if, the fact if that you we- say a, if you say a raw guy there or or, or or smackdown guy there naturally if you want to get to natalia ronda rousey and SummerSlam. natty has to win this natty's like the least focused on person in that whole the, in the whole raw women's uh division right now mm-hmm. that way you can yeah. spin off you can spin off into charlotte and oscar for the title anyway because i mean that doesn't need a build up or you could do becky versus oscar for the title anyway that doesn't need a build up either or a three-way at SummerSlam. that works as well and you could have ember moon versus sasha uh, and that could be a feud there. And Lana versus Naomi isn't—they've already been feuding. And I, I do think—I I really think Natty's going to win. Right. Hmm. That's, not, that's not so much of a toss-up as the men's one. The men's one is literally like we—it could be anybody. Men's one—it could be anyone. To if I was going to go, here's the thing: Alexa Bliss is a glaring thing just because she's the only heel in this match. But then Natalia is also like a double agent like <laughs> oh yeah and, and also alexis and i always say like look at who's been losing alexis has been eating a lot of pinfalls yeah it's a to me it's a long term if you're thinking like long long term like long 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 term um you go alexa bliss um if you're thinking right now go natalia i don't think it'll be anyone on smackdown Mm-hmm. It's definitely going to be someone on Raw. I'm going to go. It's either. Hmm. It's tough. It depends where it lands on the show, too. Yeah, exactly. It depends on <laughs> if where this it is lands. the first match on the show. I'm picking Ember Moon. <laughs> if this is like if this is like after the men's, I'm picking Natalia. Those are two good choices. And, and again, uh, placement is very, very important. So if, if the men starts some, there's going to be some fuck shit going on. And, yeah, and if the women the starts it, they really want to start it hot. They don't want to start on this like this angle of just like, oh man, controversy. Nah, they're going to want to start it with Ember Moon winning the Money in the Bank, and I was like, oh, now she can challenge anytime she wants. Um, I'm so going to go. So, I'm going to go well, Natalia. Well, if Ember wins, then then she has to go against Nia. I, I would have Nia win. I would have Nia retain and have uh, Ember versus Nia at SummerSlam. Yeah, you could do that. Just uh, I don't know. It's weird, 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 weird situation. This is there. weird uh, because they're supposed to be building towards Charlotte versus um, Ronda for next year anyway, which is a match, interpromotional match. So they're both not on the same roster, and so they don't need the belt. That's they the don't need the belt because they're <laughs> not going to be. And then if you have Ronda win it at some point at survivor series, she's going to face the smack the SmackDown women's champion. See, I'm thinking way too far in ahead. So it's like, what's the point of, huh? I mean, she could still face the SmackDown women's champion. It would just be Oscar and she would beat Oscar. We're getting, we are getting, uh, we are definitely getting, it's chess. <laughs> we're, we're definitely getting Oscar and, uh, Charlotte again. I think we're getting that sooner than later too. I feel like at Survivor Series you might get Oscar and Ronda. Woo. Well, she'd have to be. They, they, we'd have to get. They that. both have to be champions at that point. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, interesting. I think the women's side is infinitely more interesting because we actually have a, a we have two champions that are on the show all the time. So, right. uh, 
Money in the Bank, 10, 10 matches. We'll be watching it. We'll have we'll have our rundown of the card uh, and everything that happened uh, next week on the A Show. But for now, we're going to have to bid you guys adieu. Uh, thank you for listening. Make sure you check out the CM Punk show that we put out earlier this week and check out all the other shows on RNC Radio. Uh, if you have any predictions, uh, any thoughts, anything you want to you wanna add, let us know. We'll, we'll be reading tweets next week. I'm, I'm putting in the storm right now. We'll be taking your thoughts on the show, uh, Money in the Bank and NXT TakeOver next week on the show. We'll be talking about what you said, taking all your questions and everything like that. So just make sure you hit us up at OG Johnny 5 or at Meals TV, or you can hit us up at uh, RNC Radio Live and just leave your questions there. And we'll read them on the show next week. Uh, once again, thank you for listening. Anything else you want to add, Mills? Um, We might have some very special guests on the show next week. Oh, yeah. So yeah, we will. if we don't just know that they're coming eventually, <laughs> <laughs> if we don't just know that they're coming eventually, just in case, but you never know, but we're, we're trying to do some special next week. So stay tuned to RNC radio live. Trust me. You're going to love it. It's going to be a surprise too. I think people are going to be very, uh, very surprised. So uh, make sure you listen very closely to the show next week. Right. Um, but until then, please, you know, by the time you listen to this, it'll probably be, one day left on the lookout contest where you could win a copy of Dragon Ball Fighters. And if not, and you're looking at the poll and you've already lost or <laughs> something along those lines, we'll have more contests in the future. So just stay tuned to RNC Radio Live, but you can follow RNC Radio Live. It's the pinned tweet. And once you follow the directions in that tweet, you'll be entered to win a copy of Dragon Ball Fighter Z. And it's coming to Nintendo. It's coming to the Switch. So who knows? Maybe you cop it for the Switch. Maybe you want the season pass. Boom, boom, boom. Maybe we hook you up with that in the future. Who knows? You know? I'm, not playing, play- I'm, I'm not playing that game on a fucking Switch. They're tripping. All right. All right. Come on. Just <laughs> uh, I'm trying to buy the Switch here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking little ass D-pad. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, for, for Meals, this is Justin. Thanks for listening to uh, the A-Show this week. We'll see you next week, guys. Happy Rusev Day. <laughs> <laughs>